Welcome, everybody, to I'm not sure it must be episode seven, uh, two in two weeks. What a treat um, of the Dawn Approach pod with myself, Rich, Danny, and of course, the lovely Dawn. Um, January is over. Dublin Racing Festival is this weekend. Um, and DigiTips had an almighty January. I know it was very long-winded for most but we we wanted it to continue in a way over 25 points profit subscribers um and when we only tip like 0.5 points each way or one point win most of the time uh, none of this five points max bet like some of the other nonsense tips is spout um it's just a really good start to the year so um really happy with that and um the exciting news that i did touch on last week was that we purchased our first Digitips Club Horse or part of um, Sense of Worth. Uh, I know Danny knows the horse very well, um, being at Seb's Yard, Seb Spencer in Morton. Um, don't know if you want to quickly touch on on Sense of Worth, Danny. I know he's a horse you you love. Yeah, he's a proper dude. He's uh, he's seventeen hands of pure handsomeness, and uh, and he can run a bit. So yeah, we're we're really looking forward to getting him back on the track in, in a couple of weeks' time. I think Seb's got his eye on a race up at Wolves. So, yeah, I think that's maybe maybe two weeks away from, from now. So, yeah, it's exciting. Um, we've, we've obviously purchased a, a percentage of him for uh, for DigiTips. We haven't quite got our, our colours as yet, but it's all stepping stones to, to the future. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting times. I'm looking forward to, to seeing how he gets on. Yeah, exactly. In those new colours of uh, of Seb's that he's put together, is uh, the odd Jamaican. Quite, yeah, yeah, quite quite exciting. Um, yeah, like I, like you said, it's small steps, but you've got to start somewhere, and um, this is where we're starting, and it's yeah, exciting times. So basically, with your subscription membership, you get membership to the racing club as well, which I don't know if any other. Um, services provide that so you've either got racing club membership with free tips if you want to do it that way or tipping service with free racing club membership so it's it's pretty exciting um and hopefully we'll have some some good days out with him and hopefully we might venture over to dundalk at some point dawn and uh we can have a fun dork fun dork friday and uh you can come and come and tip tip us up through the car basically which you you seem to do at dundalk quite a lot Oh, well, look, it's it's fun, Doc, done, Doc. But I mean, like I say, uh, a, a congratulations and a strong pat on the back to you guys. Because like I say, myself, I'm only a new kind of team member and you, you put out goals and you've hit them left, right and centre. So it's a testament too. And then to have sense of worth involved as well. And he's like, he's 17 hands worth of gorgeousness too. And he was good to the sub members before Christmas and he makes you smile. And how exciting going into 2024 with a horse like that. And it's all about dreams, guys. And we've seen that. And it's about making dreams come true and having your own horse or even having a whisker in your own horse and having fun along the way, a bit of crack and uh, something to really, really look forward to going into 2024 and beyond. And uh, he's a great horse to have part of DigiTips. I mean, look. He makes you smile, doesn't he? And you, you need something to smile about after a very January, dra- January, as good as it was for us. You know, it was a long one. <laughs> yeah, that is that is true. That is true. Although the end of January last week with Warm Heart and Wadu, but they, they both made you smile. You got your weekend wish with Warm Heart coming through, uh, mentioned obviously on the pod last week. Um, and Wadu, who was also mentioned. Um, I don't think we go a pod without mentioning. Uh, <laughs> but what do you do? You, what do you do? But, you know, you, they're basically your horses. We can call them yours, even though you don't own them. Um, ah, although what do was wearing a was wearing something that you sent off um, to the team, didn't, didn't she? It was. It was it was her Christmas present. And I just Look, we didn't know where she was going to go. I know you guys were hoping maybe DRF was the place. But look, she went there last week and she has now five from five. She's made my season and whatever happens afterwards. Like I said, to I was done a couple of spaces during the week and it was. She's eight to one for the Boodles now. I tipped her up at 50s when I met her back in September. 
like mm. I said, she spoke to me and she just, she's the most beautiful little filly. Came out of Sir Michael Stouts on the all weather and that, and then goes and does this and jumps for fun as well. And that was Mark Walsh's first time riding her. And she just loved it. She's gone, give me more, give me more, give me more, guys. And she's just, she's beautiful. And like that, then to roll into Warm Heart and we've seen another Ryan Moore masterclass. And then she got a very, very hot date with Justify after that. So, I mean, what a treat after winning. So I'm saying already... That baby should be called Just Warm. But there was nothing just warm about that performance. What a way to go out. Yeah, it was hot. It was hot indeed. Um, we have all of the DRF races, most of, well, at least all of them from Saturday. Uh, with Whether we get through all of them on Sunday with the decks not being out, uh, with us recording this on Thursday night, um, is yet to be seen. So... Make sure you watch to the end to see if we got through them, them all. But we will start with, it isn't all about DRF, which, I mean, it is for us because we're all going to be there. Um, but Sandown is also on this weekend. Um, and we'll start there. We'll get those couple of races that we've got um, marked down out of the way. And then we'll move on to the Dublin Racing Festival and, uh, yeah, get stuck into those. So the first race we're going to touch on is the 235, two mile four furlong, Virgin Bet, Silly Isles, Novice Chase, and that's a grade one. Um, only five declared. Uh, Corbett's Cross wasn't declared, but I think that was expected in the end, um, which is a shame because we could have talked about him um, over and over like we normally do. But uh, Hermes LN is looking to get back on the winning trail after he was, well, literally blown away by Ilette Francais over Christmas. Um, you've got G Digello who fell... I think at the first fence a couple of weeks ago. Um, so it's good that he's none the worse for that and he's back. Um, Colonel Harry, I watched him at Sandown two runs ago and he was a bit outpaced over two miles. Um, and I think he's facing off against Le Patron again. Um, and I think he probably will turn the tables. I think he'll turn the tables on Le Patron um, at this trip on maybe slightly better ground than it was that day. Uh, if he can sit a bit more prominent, uh, because you want to be, you want to be up there, and he wasn't last time. He was, he was out. Like I say, he was outpaced, and he was behind them early on. And you don't want to do that at Sandown. You want to be up there. So I think he would probably be my tentative selection. Even though I do like Hermes Alen, I think Colonel Harry would be my tentative selection. We'll go to you, Danny, first, because we're going to go to Dawn a lot first for uh, to lead us into to Leopardstown later. So um, have you got any thoughts on this race? Yeah, like you say, it's a small. But select field, isn't it? So um, it's, uh, it's it's definitely a, a tricky one to start with. I think uh, Sandown have had a, obviously quite a bit of rain previously and then it's, it's dried out a bit, so it might ride a little bit dead, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll start with Jello. I think it was, it was very unlucky, really. I, I don't think it was Jello's fault. He was, quite frankly, wiped out in the air by Matata, wasn't he? So um, before that, he'd, he'd look very impressive, so... He's, uh, he's not the biggest, but he is, he is very nimble in the air. Uh, he's versatile trip-wise, and uh, I, th I think he's got gears as well. So I think he's good each-way value um, at his current price. I think you've got, obviously, the likes of Nickelback in here. He's probably going to be the one that will that will go forward. Um, Hermes Alain will probably, probably look to start that pace. Um, he's going to be very tough to beat, but just, just you know what I'm like. I don't really want to take six to four about about a horse um, in a race like this, especially as it could be run um, quite tactical with just the five. So I'd, um, I'd, I'd be wary of having any sort of, of good bet, I suppose, in, in this kind of contest. Um, Colonel Harry, similar type in the fact uh, to Jello that he jumps well. He's got a good attitude. Um, it'd be hard to completely, obviously, rule any of them out, including him. Uh, so if, if I was... If I was forced to have a bet, I'd, I'd probably go. i stick with Jello, um, so long as that hasn't that put him off a bit. Because yeah, he he jumps perfectly fine. He's 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 got a nice attitude. I, I just think he was he was wiped out. It wasn't his fault at all. Um, and and obviously Venetia won the race with with Lahom Press two years ago. So yeah, I'll stick with Jello, which uh, is, is probably what I think Don will go down that route in this race as well. To be honest. You, know, you can get nine to two on Jello at the moment, um, which I think is, yeah, fair enough price. Um, Dawn, 
are you sticking with him? I know you like him a lot. Well, you know, yeah, I do. And I mean, I bang on about him. I think, did I at one stage, he was either sober, he was Twitter X freebie many, many times. And like I say, he's Ramo's half brother too. And they usually run the same day, but Ramo doesn't have an entry this time. He's pre time qualified too. Ramo, who I, I think is decent each way play. But um, the Jello, 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 whatever you yeah. call him. I mean, he's a, he's a cool, he's a neat little horse. And my heart went out to him. I know... The JP or one Clippers were delighted, you know, that he had hacked up that day. But in another life, what would it have been? DeJello, I think, would have given him a very good race. He's, look, the three wins before that and he's value. And Deutsche and Venetia, hot, 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 hot. Laham Press two years ago, like Danny said. Jerry Kalam last year. And I mean, Jerry hung like a five bar gate and still won here last year. Um, testament to that horse again. I think he's gone straight to cello. I'm just mentioning Jerry because I'm musing over DRF already. Hermes Alan, look, he's his tongue strap on again. He, to me, was the biggest disappointment that came out of the Ballymore. The second and third horse out of the Ballymore, the best horses that came out of there. Um, Ile France, they made mince meat of him, but I think he'd make mince meat of any horse. Uh I did go for him back at Christmas because I thought, you know, there was a glimmer of hope. But at that price, do you really want to be taken? And we're, we're, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm so going. I I want to avoid tipping fabs all the time, you know, that way because it's easy, and I don't, I don't want it that easy. There was a strong mention um about Le Patreon. I did go back and look at his course and distance when I looked at his twenty lenther at Fontwell. So, I mean, he's worth a, a, a little tiny look. But, um, look, without the favourite, it's the Jello for me. He's He turns up and he shows up. And he was just taken out of it the other day. You know, he was just taken out of it. He was unlucky. He gets a safe, good run. I think he's the winner in here. And I think he's he's really, really good value. If you want to go with the favourite, that's your safe bet. But what, what can we take from Kempton, really, apart from that LA Francais is an absolute weapon? You know? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I would just mention that it is probably his trip, Hermes Ellen, this two mile far, because obviously that three mile trip chasing the machine like that is always going to be tough for any horse. But I do think this sort of trip is probably ideal. But if you put all the favourites over the next few days into a hat, I think he'd be nearer the bottom for me. Um, I, I wouldn't want to be pulling him out as a, as a bet. You know, I'd, I'd rather put him back in the bag and, and go again. We'll go to the 310 which is the two mile, seven and a half furlong Virgin Bet Heroes Handicap Hurdle, which is a, a premier handicap. We know we like to get stuck into some of these handicaps just because usually the prices are a bit better. Um, and even if you do tip a favourite, I think the favourite here is, what, yeah, five to one Ed Keeper. Um, I feel like I've picked out, I looked through the race and I saw that St. Davy was 10 to one just before declarations is now 17 to two, I think. Um no, st well, it still says ten to one here, but I, I don't think that's right. I think it's I think it's seventeen to two. The last I saw, um, he was very highly regarded last year. Um, after he won a maiden, they stuck him straight into the the Grand Sefton um, at Aintree. Uh, he did finish ninth, um, but loads of horses have come out of that race. Um, it was won by Apple Away. You had Iroko, Stay Away Fay, Grey Dawning, and loads of others in there. Um, and he won his only start this year jumped the last terribly um which probably means that he didn't get put up as much as he uh, maybe could have uh, he's i think he's rated 130 um and he's definitely going to be better than that mark in time definitely each way and he'll probably sneak his way to be my next best um of the week uh danny let's come to you again yeah i mean we've also been me, talking about... well i have but we've also <laughs> been talking about uh Venetia Williams quite a bit and she's won the last two runnings of this so you don't want to discount her and her in, in here Tanganyika is it? I mean it could be we, our pronunciation is not uh, is left, leaving something to be desired I'm sure uh, After everything. four pints at the weekend we're going to pronounce that again if it wins oh, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not totally convinced on the name, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure the horse will be there or thereabouts with uh, with the record in the race. But, um, yeah, I think I put the horse up at Ch uh, Chepstow 
a couple of runs back. Um, to be perfectly honest, I think the horse maybe wants the ground a little bit better than than that was that day. So, yeah, can't rule that horse out. Um, good to see uh, Cameron Isles retaining the ride in Operation Manor. I think that is a horse to keep on side. Obviously, you can't discard any horse that's got three ones next to its name. Yeah, but no, I'm, I'll stick with St. Dave. He's, he's unexposed. He was, he was well back last time um, when when beating Emmy Tom. Emmy Tom's a fine horse, obviously. Not quite maybe the same horse that it used to be, but still a, a good yardstick. Um, so, yeah, did that nicely. They tried him in the Sefton at Aintree last season. I don't think uh, I don't think the Yarder wants to, to put a horse in, in a race like that if they don't think uh, they're capable of being involved. So, he'll improve from that last run. Looks well handicapped still, going up just six pounds. So he's running on a, on a nice weight as well. So yeah, he'll he'll do for me. Yep, Dawn. Uh, well, look, the lady she gets brought up here a bit, and I'll always go back to a Yates because I was lucky enough to have a Yates lady myself. And I say they give quite a bit. West Balboa in here now. Look, she's got the twelve stone. Tristan's taken three off. Not herself in the long walk at all. But I mean, if you go back to last season, how good she was. And Bet brewing up a storm this season. So, and that was 12 lengths. So I just, I think she's worth a look. I mean, I always bang on about weight. And we even seen, to refer back to Paisley Park last week, Paisley was giving, you know, there was a lot of weight difference between him and Noble Yates. So with these handicaps that, Rich, you seem to really enjoy just giving out, like, I don't know what, as a as as, as pain or something. Punishment. It's just a bit it, of punishment it's for the, you, Dawn, you know? It's the, yeah, that's the thanks you get. But Scamlock, Liet, she's seven to one. It means great. Scamlock is cloud. So it's something grey cloud or silver cloud or something like that. She's seven to one for Harry Durham. Operation Mana. I like the way you're thinking there, Danny. Cameron Eels, very underestimated. Lovely Welch jockey taking the valuable seven off. Ed Keeper, look, he shows up, he turns up again. I'm banging on about weight. I do have a big thing. Now, my my case as well with Operation um, Mana is you've got in, in some form here as well. Uh with Joker Demai, it goes back a good bit because it's such a, a fleshy handicap. I do try to make cases. West Balboa, because of what she was, I do like her, but I'm just saying the weight is a worry to me. Uh, I think Scumlock Leah is a lot of value here at seven to one, so I'm going to go that way and uh, ni nice in the weight, 10 8 in the weights, so that's decent and that doesn't worry me. Okay, well, I think you can get tens now. Just a bit nice. of drift for you. And West Baba obviously is thought of like you think of her because she's into sevens, I think. So um don't know if these prices are completely up to date ahead of me because St. David it says tens, but um if I can get tens on that, then I think I might be steaming in. <laughs> um and I'll probably have had a pint or two by then. Um if we watch while we're at while we're at Leopardstown. So please, you guys, you might need to hold me back because I'll be parting with a few euros. <laughs> Um, the bookies there. We'll tie you to the lamppost yeah, before you go you'll up need to. to like, you'll need to, you but... know, Mulvaney's or something. That's yeah. <laughs> Other bookmakers are available. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they are. Uh, that leads us on nicely to Leopardstown, um, where it's going to be a cracking weekend of racing. Um, everyone's been talking about it this week, whether it's spaces, podcasts, um, National TV, international TV, everything. Um, it's the place to be this weekend. Um, really looking forward to it. Flying in tomorrow night and then yeah, getting stuck in on Saturday. Uh, we'll start with the first, which is the 120 Nathaniel Lacey and Partners Solicitors Novice Hurdle. Grade one. How many grade ones are there this weekend? Eight. Eight, I think. Yeah, eight. I do fancy one in this, but I think you... Dawn, um, definitely speak better of all the horses than me. So we will go to you first. And if it's the same selection, then all the better. Yeah, well, first of all, happy Dublin Racing Festival. Mm. I mean, we're on the eve, eve, and uh, we're going to finally get to meet each other in the flesh too, Ooh. not uh, on the bed or Danny on the sofa. And I don't know where you are on the toilet, Rich. 
<laughs> I'm here, there, and everywhere. Every, every. I don't think I've done a podcast. I know, in the same all around place. the world. You are. I'm, You're a globe trotter. Back in the UK and in my sister's bedroom at my mum's house. So yeah. Oh, Always lovely! Right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's gonna be some weekend, and like you said, eight grade ones. I mean, this is our mini Cheltenham, and we just love it. And we're gonna start off beautifully. Now, the favorite in here is Predator's Gold. No one seems to want anything else. I mean, his form is Frank, left, right and centre. He was very impressive at Punchestown. I'll give him that. But again, are we going to go safe? Are we going to go with the fav? I have been waxing lyrical about the lady in here. And the lady is trained by a lady and is going to be ridden by a lady. Uh, Jetara. She's related to Jetski and she just keeps improving. She's getting seven pounds from the boys. She's 14 to 1 for the mares at Cheltenham. That will half should she win should she win this race and beat these boys. Um 16 length win at Fairy House and a novice maiden. Uh, Jack Kennedy usually rides her, but you know, she's beat a penny a hundred who we seen behind Jay de Grugy last week. She's bet pink in the park. She's formed with Ashro Diamond. We've seen what Ashro Diamond did your side of the pond last week. And uh her run here at Christmas was so good. She's so exciting. And the the owners are just, you can see that they're in awe of her. And it's great to see the famous orange colours back, you know, off jet ski as well. It brings you a lot of positive nostalgia. So there's a lot to like about her. You know, start off with the ladies. Start off with Jesse and Rachel and Chitara. Who, I, who else I will mention in here who's nine to one. And I think... It's quite mean, and he's been a friend of Digi Tips for a while. He's got cheek pieces on for the first time. Jack takes the ride on him. Stellar story. He beat Ilay Lantique in his bumper. He's been third to Slade Steel. Slade Steel runs on Sunday, and he's one of my fancies for Sunday. And he's been second only by a length to Loch Glynn. Loch Glynn is in here, but Loch Glynn is three to one, yet Stellar story is nine to one. Make it make sense. You know, that way I think... He's great each way play at nine to one. If you don't want the favour, I have said it all week. I think Jatara is the one to beat in this race for the ladies. Okay, well, you did go with the one I was going to say, because Jatara <laughs> for me too. I've written down pretty much exactly the same. Seven pounds from the field, nine to two, which looks a good bet to me at the price. Officially, she's rated one for two, so getting the weight. As well, Stella's story was is one three seven, and Lachlan beat Stella's story by like a length and a half, so that probably makes him around what one forty. So, yeah. I mean, that's to me that means that Jatara should probably finish ahead of of those two. Um, favorite, yeah, unexposed. I think needs to probably improve and probably should, but needs to improve to beat Jatara. Um, Danny, gonna add to that. Yeah, I think we've uh, we've got a thirty three percent strike rate when we all fancy the same one. So I think we're we're going to improve on that. I'm sticking with Jatara. Yeah, um, DDR team DDR. DDR's in. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm a sucker for a mare at the best of times, but you know, she handles the ground, she settles, she's classy. She is very classy. Um, jumps, travels. What more do you want from from a mare? Because obviously, we all know mares can be a bit funny. So. Yeah, she's uh, she's got the most experience and she's getting seven pound. Um, beat, tell me something, girl. Uh, giving weight away and um, gave Zara the brave a fright. Did tell me something, girl. So yeah, I think she's going to be be a nice price at uh, at that. So yeah, you've, you've definitely got to be uh, getting stuck into her. I think if she was trained by Willie, to be fair, she'd she'd probably be around five to two for this. So yeah, I'll stick with her. But I think Predator's Gold. Um, don't worry about the step up and trip. We'll stay all day. If, if that's if that's what what you fancy uh, is is bet, betting on favourites, then yeah, the trip won't be an issue. Um, but a little bit of experience when you free run, so I'm more than happy to to stick with the lady. Let's hope she can start us off well. Then that would uh, be some start, that's for sure. We'll move to the second race, which is the 150 McCann Fitzgerald Spring Juvenile Hurdle, another Grade One over two miles. Um, I think Mullins has got six declared here, um, which is probably quite normal for for the DRF. Um, it's just trying to pick which one of his is, is going to be the best one. Um, 
got a feeling though that we might be taking him on in this because we've got Rob Core's number one fan in Danny, <laughs> um, who might want a bit of Carla Conti at the prices. Um, and I know Dawn, you're really keen on Inter Lotto, and I think is like twelve to one, which is ridiculous. Um, you mentioned him on last week's pod. Um, I'm quite keen to uh, keep an interest, an eye, an eye on Bunting for Tony Bloom, uh, who's been thrown in at the deep end after a good maiden win. Um, the price is probably an each way price, but I really want to see. I'm going to be keen to actually see horses in the flesh um, and take a look at them before um, placing any bets this week. Um, I'm sure I'll be stood quite close to you, Dawn, and you can give me some pointers as to what I should and shouldn't be looking at because um, I'm always quite keen to, to obviously learn more and I feel like I know what I'm looking for, but probably I'm looking in the wrong places. Dawn, who do you fancy in this? Oh, God, well, there's everything and anything and in between and it was actually, well, right, okay, again, because I've been sitting on more spaces than I'd say in Mars at this stage, but... Uh, yeah, I've been waxing lyrical about Intelletto, but I will give the floor. I know when we go over to Danny, because I feel kind of mean. I feel like I've, in a way, shoehorned my way in in that way. And like last week, Danny was saying about his breeding and we've seen his half brother win at Punchestown the other day too. So the breeding is the stuff of dreams. Like I say, breeding is my kink and I just... To, to dissect into it and like to see his flatty form to continue us as well. He's a double green dream. Now you're saying twelves, Rich. He's actually gone back into nines when I was looking okay. at him earlier. So, I mean, twelves, nines, whatever. Take him, whatever, because he was so good at Leopardstown at Christmas. So, so good. Uh, and form is being franked as well with like Nadawi, who I've seen win uh, on Sunday at Nace. Very, very good juvie as well. What I'll just say really quickly is take Barrier from that race. That's Pipe Piper's half-sister too. Ndawi now goes on to Boodles. I digress. That's why I like Intelletto here because his form's being franked. Stormheart, you always ask in the flesh or on the sofa. Stormheart deserves to be favourite here. He was so bloody impressive at Punchestown. He screw shooted away. He was with uh, Chris Head in France to begin with, with your flat form. Eagles Rain, who was third to him that day, won at Punchestown three days ago. So your form's being frank there. Uh, the race that he won New Year's Eve, Pipe Piper won in 2021. Uh, you just 22 lengths at Punchestown New Year's Eve. It's not easy done. What Paul said afterwards was he was actually blinded at two hurdles. So the horse needed a pair of sunglasses and he still was able to win 22 lengths. He's very good. What I heard Willie saying was he was finding it hard to split Storm Heart and High Wind. Now, High Wind, we've seen, jumped very oddly and literally put himself through the hurdles two weeks ago at Punchestown and was still able to go on. Lark in the Morning was third in that race. Lark in the Morning did have an entry for Weatherby on Saturday. He now goes to Fairy House Wednesday, I think. He's favourite for the Boodles at the moment. You've got a newcomer here for JP as well. Majbara. Majbara, I didn't go right into his uh, breeding, but I'd say it's quite nice. He's 11 to 2. He's 14 to 1 for the Triumph, and we haven't even seen him yet. So we'll learn a lot from him. And Carla Conti, the Rob Core Colors, uh, we've seen what she did at Christmas. She was very good. She's by the same sire as Ile Francaise as well. So in the space of an hour, that sire had two winners, both sides of the pond. Um, Bet Cargizi. Cargizi is in here 11 to 2 in the Jade de Grugy honeysuckle colours. Uh, Nuremberg Ring was third that day. And then Calaconti at Fairy House. Nuremberg Ring won. Calaconti was second. So, and she's only got 10 7. Jack Kennedy rides. Where do I go with this? I mean, Intelletto is screaming at me at 9 to 1 each way play is fantastic. But Stormheart, what I've seen, I can't ignore. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really hot on him. So Stormheart and then Intelletto, I'm not forsaking. I'm not going back on what I said. He's a decent each way play. Hey, Danny. Yeah. Um, in regards to Carla Conti, I won't be sticking with her. I don't think she's quite good enough at this top level, to be perfectly honest. 
Um, I think Kargis will improve past her, um, especially now they're off level weights. Um, but I will just touch on um, Bunting. I know you've mentioned it there, Rich. was very impressive. Um, jumped impeccably well and could end up being another shrewd purchase for uh, for connections. Um, but obviously, dawn has gone through the race really well there. Interlotto, we mentioned a lot on, on, on the breeding last week. Very impressive last time. But Madgeborough, we haven't we haven't spoken a lot about Madgeborough. If you delve into the form of that old toy win, you'll see Batman g Rack was in behind. Finished fourth, obviously, in the Grade 2 Juvenile at Leopardstown over Christmas. Um, it was nine lengths behind Madgeborough at Autoy. Um, so I think the fact that, obviously, Willie is throwing this horse straight in off the back of that win at Autoy into this contest tells you tells you plenty. So I think I'd, um, I'd maybe have an each-way saver on on that horse. You know, JP McManus is a, a shrewd owner and he's, uh, he's, he's bought well there, I think, Definitely going to be having a chance at, uh, at Cheltenham if all goes well here. But, um, yeah, I, I'd stick with Dawn. Stormheart was very impressive. Um, three wide turning in. Obviously, just turning the screw ever so slightly and, and then it was over in a matter of strides. Quick and clear to the last and absolutely pinged that final for, uh, that final hurdle before quick and away in there. In consummate ease, so Stormheart's going to be the one that puts it to, to Sergino, I think, at, uh, at Cheltenham. This is going to be Willie's Willie's number one horse for that for that contest. So, yeah, Stormheart for me. Okay. Interesting. That'll be the first favourite that, that wins of the weekend then. The hats will be flying and Stormheart <laughs> finishes in front. Uh, the 225 is the Goffs Irish Arkle Novice Chase. Uh, over two mile, one furlong, another grade one. We have Marine Nationale, Fassar Vega, Founder 50, Italy Tom, Charger, and Senechia. Yeah, Senechia, like yeah. Looks yeah. like a no hoper from the odds. Um, oh. but, well, it does. It's 150 to one. I mean, it's not going to be these. Like to turn up, oh, God love him. But he was a good second at punch this time when the jumps came back. Fair enough. Well, yeah, you're picking here. Good luck. <laughs> if you pick well, him, if you pick him. The pin, the pin jobbers will. The pin jobbers might. Yeah. Um, they'll be losing their money, I think. Cause does I'm Marine... actually just going to put it out there and see how many copy it. <laughs> does Marine National say. win? Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi. Does Marine National win this? Marine National. And we're all going to be singing it. We're all going to be drinking it. He is now my mate and me. We had a kind of a debrief a couple of weeks ago about there had been a sea of blue came for a facile Vega. This time I didn't say about the sea of blue because I just when Gary was still in here, Gaelic warrior, and it was outright blue bloody murder today. Why, Willie? Why, why, why? Why question a genius? Did we see what the genius did last week? Did we see all his winners? So you do not question a genius. Leave him put Gary. And then, you know, I think he's done a favour to me that now I don't have to have a sleepless night worrying, you know, about my Gary. Even though I wasn't worried about my Gary, I was willing to take on Marine National. I digress. Marine National is perfection. I got back to the first time I seen him and a photographer said to me, you need to take a picture of this horse now. He's an absolute weapon. He's going to be incredible. He is incredible. Um... His his debut over chases, I mean, at Leopardstown, he was laughing at the rest and we were smiling going over and he was having the best time of his life. So, yes, he does win this. Basile Vega, I don't know what the hell was going on in that race. It wasn't pleasant to watch. It wasn't the real Basile Vega. There does be questions like his DRF last year. I actually thought he had bled. He hadn't. It just did not go right for him. And you wonder how many Leopards Towns go right for him, how many Leopards Towns go wrong for him. Found a 50. He is a little bit clumsy at times. He hasn't learned his lesson. That mistake cost him to drain more. He does have Corbett Cross form, so I will always look towards him. Um, L.A. Thompson, his chasing debut was very good. And last year, when L.A. Thompson turned up, he was 14 to 1. This year, when L.A. Thompson turns up, he's 14 to 1 with Danny Mullins up. 
and Danny, as we seen, and the Faheen race with the between the two cousins they've made up, which is great to see. Um, at fourteens, I think he's worth a little fiddle each way. Each way, he doesn't. He does not beat Marine National. He doesn't. But Ilé Thompson each way play at fourteens. He's dangerous at fourteens. Absolutely dangerous. I think it's twenties now. Wow! Somebody else heard me. They're pushing them out even further. We love a grey. <laughs> we love a grey, and I'm wearing a bit of purple on Saturday. So there you go. It's a tip of the stuff. But I'm saying each way play. But we're all gonna be singing with the pint in the air, Marie Nationale, and that's what we. That's the way we want it. Okay, Danny. I think uh, Don must have my notes. To be perfectly honest, because um, <laughs> copy I'm, and paste. I'm, I'm agreeing. <laughs> Uh, I, I love Ilya, Ilya Tomps. I've been a fan for, for quite some time. Um, I was very impressive, obviously, last year at the DRF. And um, wasn't all that far behind Gaelic Warrior last time. Uh, you know, obviously, there was a, there was a bit of a bit of a carry-on with uh, with Danny and uh, and Patrick that day. But um, he was there, and he was rightfully there, in, in with a chance at that stage. So you can't knock him for that, you know, and if, if Gary's as good as what they say, um, then you, you've got to take that 20 to 1 and, uh, and, and get stuck in each way in, in a race like this. And it's, it's also interesting as well, the, the, the hood's obviously retained, but the, the breach for the tongue tie for the first time. So if that can eke out a little bit more improvement as well, then he could be the, uh, could be the forecast option because I'll just say Marine Nationals not going to be beaten here. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it looks like he's he's settled a bit better over fences, Ile Tom, than he did over hurdles. And yeah, tongue tie probably will help even more with that. We'll go, to the three, we'll go to the three o'clock. Race and stay at Leopardstown handicap hurdle. Another handicap, more pain, um, which is three miles, half a furlong. And I've written down that I'd be totally guessing here. Um, there's a few in here that we've mentioned before. Uh, but Dawn, we need your expertise here, please. We do. I, I, I know. Look, we're all experts these days. So you really, you gave me, you gave me hard work here, and you'll have to edit this out. But fuck me, pink till Tuesday. This was tough. This took me <laughs> a half an hour. That's what took most of the chunk of my time here. So, right, I'll start off with this two in here, two that I had actually given over the Christmas, which was music of Tara. And Gweave Kewl. That was when I had my six over Christmas in one day, which I'm so, so proud of. Um, but yeah, Music of Tara here. She's got her tongue strap on. She's 12 to 1, Rachel and Henry. She's only 10 11 after that win. She was third in the race the year before at Christmas, uh, the same race that she went on and then won. She's form with Fortune and Fiora. Fortune and Fiora has form with Harvard Guy. We see how good Harvard Guy is, even when he's sunk with weight. Forte Vendatura has uh, entry on Sunday. I'm foreshadowing for Sunday. But um, when she won at Leopard Sound at Christmas, the way she fought back beating Heiko Conti, she was just, I love the way she fought back. And that weight, 10 11, in the Rob Core, Danny's Kink's favorite colors, you know, you, you have to like her at that. Ishan in here is coming off a win too. He hasn't been penalised. He's 14 to 1. Philip Enright, uh, he's got only 10 1 on his back. He's been second to the Raging Cajun, who has the West is awake form, which is really, really good form, Frank. Panda Boy, they're all going crazy for. He's been fifth in an Irish national. JJ's up, but he's got 11 9 on his back. And again, we say handicaps, if you can read them and if you know your weights, you know this is going to be a big penalty on him. He's the second to last day at Leopardstown to meeting in the waters. He was carrying 11-3 there that day, whereas meeting in the waters was carrying, I think, 10-6. But like the fifth in the Irish National, and he has been really well campaigned this year. And Gweave Kewl, I go back to this girl all the time. She's by Har's aunt, was brilliant at Christmas. For Ted Walsh, um, the jockey still takes five off. The owners are the same owners that uh, owned Finchgale Bio, you know, that super dual Guineas winning mare, uh, well, Philly at the time, 
She's won at Leopardstown twice and she's pre-Tomps qualified. Ted has already said he's not sure if she will go for the pre-Tomps, but she is. This is a Philly lads. When you stand by the side of the parade ring, she's got the most beautiful head. She's like her daddy has and she's gorgeous. But um, yeah, I'm very, very torn. Like I say about Panda Boy, it's that weight that worries me. But I mean, he's gone up six pounds. Is that going to crush him? Oh, look, and good time Johnny won this two years ago, who we seen go on and win the pre tomps last year. Music of Tara, I'm sticking with. She's got 10 11, and she was so grindy and good. She likes Leopardstown. And at each way play, I like um, Ishan here for Sam Curling. I think he's well in with the weights, and he's only he, he's 14 to 1. He twos now, Ishan. Okay. And 12 to 1, Music of Tara. The odds that I've got written down here. Um, yeah, music of Tara. My lucky number, number 19, Danny's kink. And you've got Rachel Henry. I think this is, this could be a great day, everyone. Yes. We go through <laughs> the whole card. We are going to go through the card. Danny, are you going to give us something else or are you just going to tick that box and move um, on? I'm a big uh, Panda Boy fan, I'll be perfectly honest, I think. And, and obviously, I'm a big Martin Brazil fan. I think he's a phenomenal trainer. Gets the horses ready for the for the big occasions, um, and yeah, I think this is a horse that you want to keep on side. I think I'm not sure exactly what price he is for the national, but I think that's going to be his, his main target this year at uh, at Aintree. There, he's he's a spring horse. He runs well this time of year, heading into the spring, um, and I think. Did Manella Times go down this route and, and finish placed in this race before winning at? Um, at Aintree, um, and he's actually obviously running off one, three, four back over hurdles. Um, dropped two pounds from his previous run over over hurdles, and obviously that that run behind meeting meeting of the waters last time is is, is solid form. So, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with uh, stick with Panda Boy and, and have a little cheeky peek at the anti post for the for the Grand National before he runs. Hey, nice one. Well, we've got that one ticked off. That was easy. <laughs> then we'll move to the 335. Yeah, you say that now. That's a half an hour of my life I'm never getting back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you get the winner, it doesn't matter. I've, I've just made it that simple. <laughs> 335 is the Paddy Power Irish Gold Cup Chase, grade one, three miles, half a furlong. Galloping des Champs. I cannot wait to see him. It'll be the first time I seen him in the flesh um we've actually got some scarves made up that bear a little bit of resem resemblance i can't don't know if you can see there you go but it's black not brown but maybe more state man than galloping um we can get the shoe polish out it's fine yeah we'll get we'll get them make them brown for this um Chocolate. so yeah if you see us wearing <laughs> those then come and say hi and uh, mine's a guinness thank you <laughs> yeah i think it's his for the taking. He's going up against horses that he's faced and beaten over this trip before. Um, Dawn, do you want to give us a little bit of a love-in and then we can move on? Oh, look, it's a complete love-in and you're going to stand there and go, I see what you mean, Mr. Legs 11. Him and Adam. Adam is who looks after Astro Diamond as well. And the two of them are a unit. They're a unit and... He's black beauty. He's completely black beauty. And come rain, come storm, whatever the case may be. And funnily enough, there always seems to be some type of drama with me trying to get to him. So hopefully there isn't Saturday, please. <laughs> but there's, I, I, I just, it's like when he was walking around the parade ring and I have a video of him before Savills and everybody was Jerry Kalam, Jerry Kalam, Jerry Kalam. And he was just walking around going, okay, guys, okay. And when he came over at the last, Paddy Power had the picture up themselves of him coming over the last. And it's like he's he's cheesing at the camera with his 23 lenter. 23 lengths. Incredible. Don't get me wrong, I concur with Danny. Martin Brazel is a fantastic trainer. Fast or slow, what he has done, what he has achieved, a brilliant horse. Like when you think back this time last year at Leopardstown, he couldn't uh, fit. Well, he was fifth behind Gentleman Demi, 
he couldn't really finish the race nearly. So then the improvement from the old team, it was like someone switched a light on and he just improved and he improved. Conflated, we know what way he's going. He's going for the cross country. Um, so you might know a little bit more. And I do stand by, I think he would have been second in a different race, but in the Savills, because 23 lengths may as well have been a different race. And we've seen what Capadano did last week. And also, I am Maximus. I'd say he's going the route again. He's a funny Frenchy. You get a giggle watching him going around. He's so handsome. I'd say he's going for Aintree this year. But um, no, Mr. Legs 11, all day, every day in the, the mustard and the chocolate. He's just, he's, he's perfection. He's black beauty. And you guys are in for such a treat i want to see the eyes just glaze over it's going to be just like see it when people see con hill there's like a red mist this will be a black mist you're in for such a treat amazing danny nothing nothing more to add to that really can you um yeah he's created 180 which is just ridiculous just shows exactly how good he is um i mean racing post ratings had him at 184 what, last time which was joint with his performance in the gold cup so you know take take that of uh, of what you will because if he's performing like that now then what's he going to be like at cheltenham he's just getting bigger and stronger and, and and even better than than last year i think so i'm i'm looking forward to to seeing him in the flesh and then before he goes on to win a, another gold cup yep agree just can't believe people were were slagging the horse off after he Ran over an inadequate trip earlier in the season. Just Mental. come on, guys. Come on. Well, we, I mean, we said it. We did say like anyone backing him for that race over what two and a half miles needs the head testing. Um, it's just literally a prep to get himself fit for for the other three runs of his of his season, really, which was um, over Christmas and then now and then on to Cheltenham. Yeah, so, I'll just touch on obviously a, a lot of people you see on on Twitter and things like that saying about horses not running. Um, in certain races and not running as often as they'd like, you know, the likes of Constitution Hill and and Galloping de Champ. At the end of the day, you, you want to see them at the best, so they've got to be looked after and running the in the races that are prepped out for them at, at the start of the year. So, if if things don't go to plan and they can't run in them certain races, then obviously you make alternative arrangements. But you ain't going to see them anymore. And at the end of the day, what fun is it seeing a horse that? you're anticipating to run extremely well to, to then blow up because you've maybe had one too many runs because Twitter have decided to, uh, to <laughs> burn the house down, you know? No, completely agree right. with you. Completely <laughs> agree with you, yeah. After Galloping de Champs, we will be moving on to the 410 Ryanair Handicap Chase um, over two mile one, which is a listed contest. Uh, I see... A wave of the sea has won this twice in a row for Joseph O'Brien. He's got Solness in here. Final orders won the race last year. Um, could he be a horse that goes back to back after another one that went back to back? Um, I just want to see Keith O'Donoghue in the saddle doing Paul Carberry things. So I'm hoping that he does that on final orders in this race. But um, Dawn? Well, I have I have final orders here. He was my one of my huge Cheltenham picks last year and fi ended up fifth in the Grand Annual after winning this race last year to Mascada. And Mascada, you know, he's had a good season himself. He's he's a good horse in himself. Now, I've heard mentions of soul soulness in here it's a lot of weight as well of joseph's but final orders he was ninth to stage star in the paddy power gold cup uh 18th in the galway plate he goes to belliers town and wins on the flat as well so he's a really really fun horse you know and he was fourth to al dancer this season at jeff so so you know Keith in the seat, as we always say, those red gloves on. Uh, Keith is, is such a great horseman. And when weight's involved, again, I'm going to bang on about weight. When weight's involved, you don't worry about Keith because Keith will get them there for you. Sophie Leach, I'm excited to see. She's sending one over as well. And uh, the horse only has 10 10. Mandara, he won a handicap chase at Cheltenham in December. James Reevely is riding. So it's great to see that there is 
people coming over from your side of the pond because we do enjoy having you guys over, you know. Henzi is in here too. He's got formed a king of PRs. King of PRs wasn't disgraced a few weeks ago. I mean, he just couldn't quite get there, but he has been a horse that I've been, you know, promoting a good bit and have given him to the subs a few times. So Mikey O'Sullivan's up. Hopefully Mikey's coming off his his serious win on Marine National. He's got 10 to Henzi here and he's 12 to 1. And Rebel Gold. Connor Stone Walsh is taking a valuable five off. Now, Connor Stone Walsh, he rides for Gavin as well. And he is going to be, you know, a really good jockey to follow for the future. You're talking about Freddie over your side and Freddie proved what, how good he is, you know, an elixir de nuts. And Connor, I put in the same space as Freddie here. Um, he was last seen in the hilly way behind El Fab. I wouldn't mind that run. And he won the Newland Chase at Nace. Really liked him in that. He's uh, trained by Pat Foley, a local trainer down the road, who's a very good dual purpose trainer too. He won uh, the Memorial Chase at Fairy House last year. He was supposed to run it this year, but I think he came up lame. And uh, he was fifth in this last year. So like I say, Connor has taken a valuable five off. I think he's whopping at 25 to one. I really, really do. I think it's an insult to the horse. Uh, I think Sophie Leach's is not to be ignored with that light weight and final orders if he's back to his best, you know, you, you, you're going to see him there or thereabouts. Like I say about Hensy, again, you're looking at each way play. I think they're paying out to six here, fifth or six. So you've plenty of each way play. But um, yeah, I'm going to say final orders should be there or thereabouts. And then... Rebel Gold at 25 to 1 each way play with Connor up. Okay. Yeah, see, Henzi is Mullins' only horse in this, I think. And yeah. you don't often get a Mullins horse that goes off 12. So we'll all be kicking ourselves if we don't back, back that. And a, a Mullins winner at 12 to 1 uh, happens on the day. Danny? I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the big chap, to be perfectly honest. He um, was impressive. He beat my mate Mozzie. Uh, obviously, a lot of people come out and, and said really shouldn't have done that, but hey, he beat my mate Mozzie. Look what my mate Mozzie's done. Um, he has proved that it's not a fluke. Finishing he finished second last time, um, which was which was a good solid run as well. Um, he, he jumps well. He's, he's he's a nice horse to to keep on side. I think so. I'll uh, I'll stick with him. We get to the last race <laughs> of the Saturday, which is the four forty. Donahue Marquis, Future Stars, Irish National Hunt flat race, grade two, two miles. We say Future Stars because we have Dream to share in here who was a star mm -hmm. last year and is sticking to bumpers. <laughs> so either he schooled terribly or he hasn't grown up yet, um, but it's not often you see that. Um, so, Dawn, are you with him or against him? Well, I'm going to enjoy him, Rich, because for whatever the case may be, we did share that dream with him and we followed that dream and at Punchestown then seeing him after he won the champion bump, Brian Gleeson, who, you know, is the pundit over here, uh, his son, John, rides him and John is, you know, a very, a very, very good jockey and he's kind of, you could nearly say the two of them have grown together, you know, so a dream to share is going to come back to the race that he won last year, the future champions. Now, I have been a little bit mean and I have said he's like a kid that's been kept back at school, you know, the 18 year old kept back with the 17 year olds or whatever else. But we know, you know, he's just had setbacks and it hasn't gone all right for him. But isn't it great to see him? And he's going for his sixth win, which is kind of he's trying to make history, too, because he can't go in the one at Cheltenham. So, you know, we may as well enjoy him. He's obviously he's going to go off favourite. I'm not going to be lazy here and go with the fab. I'm going to enjoy him, but I'm not going to go with the fab. I have been waiting for you ought to know. And finally, you ought to know is making his appearance with Jody Townend. He's uh, five. No, he's seven to one, actually. Nine he to was one. Nine to one. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. I think it's because of Croke Park's one little blot on his copybook now. Everybody's forgetting about you ought to know, but... 
I did the anti-post show with Ginger Joe. He was mentioned on that back in September. And I did my own five to follow. And he was mentioned then because he set my world alight. I thought he was class at Galway. I really, really did. Uh, the enabler is in here too. He's, I don't know what you've got there, Rich, but I have him an eight to one. Harry Swan is up on Ends, him. I think. And he's related to Denman. They're saying he's going to be a gold cup horse in the making. The race he won in Navin just before Christmas, he was very, very good for Lenter. Uh, it's the same race that Envoy Allen had won in the past on Cossack, Sam Crow. So, you know, you're, you're talking about a future champion here, and I think he is whopping value. I even went back to his point to point, and we seen two weeks ago Kingston Pride, who, you know, Nico rode a Lingfield in that bumper, he ended up second, but it was a very, very good debut. He actually bet the enabler in his point to point. He's massive value. I'm just going to give a little shout out as well to my great mate. I talk about pretty horses and this is such a pretty horse. This is the unicorn, but he's actually half brother to Ashro Diamond as well, but he's grey and a lovely, lovely syndicate. I encountered him when he won at 33 to 1 with Patrick up. So a lovely horse. I, I encountered him, but he's 33 to 1 for this. He's a lovely horse and I think he's definitely a spring horse. Um, Patrick is on Redemption Day. Now, Redemption Day, we talk about horses being kept back or big boys being kept back in school. And Redemption Day is kind of like that as well. But um, if I was to say no to a dream to share, and I'm just going to enjoy seeing him because it's probably a public appearance. Uh, you ought to know is massive value, really massive value. We haven't seen him for a long time, but I was so, so impressed. And the enabler. Wherever he goes, we follow. I mean, they're talking about a future Gold Cup horse. And I truly believe that you've got Denman in the breeding. I know Denman's half-sister is running in France at the moment. And she's supposed to be incredibly good too. So it's all in the breeding there. But um, you ought to know. I, I think he's been, he's going to be worth the wait. And he's, we're getting him Saturday. Nice. Danny? Uh, there's one for the Shrewdies in here. I like um, Jeroboam Machine. Machine. Joyo Machine? <laughs> nah, not Joyo Machine. He runs but earlier in the card. Half brother to Joyo Machine. Oh! <laughs> yeah, half brother to Joyo Machine. Um, beat the uh, poor DB Cooper, um, who obviously unfortunately passed away at, uh, at Fairy House. Um, but before that, DB Cooper ran no flies on him, very close. Um, I know you know exactly how I feel about no flies on him, Dawn. Um, so that is good form um, as far as I'm concerned. So he's definitely one I want to keep on side. Um, 18 to 1 for this, but actually 16 to 1 for the champion bumper at Cheltenham. Makes no sense to me. So no. I'll be... Uh, I'll be sticking with with him. Um, I, I just I, I don't understand the price. I, I really don't. How can you be sixteen to one for a for a champion bumper, but eighteen to one for this? Well, unless they know he's not fit and he's going to get well. Fit, but... Well, no. Well, he only ran seventy one days ago. You know, uh, has there been issues? Maybe I don't know. For these connections, you'd probably expect there to be a bit more money um, around if if it is extremely well fancied. But you know, like you're taking on. Horses like the Dream to Share, and you ought to know who are, who are coming back from a break and obviously may have other plans further down the line. So, yeah, I just find it baffling the price, but I don't mind having a, having a nibble of that. Okay, lovely. Let's hope that we've gone and got ourselves a few winners um, in that lot. Uh, after that, we'll be partying on down a little bit and uh, hopefully. Mm -hmm making the first at 12.40 on Sunday. Um, <laughs> it has been known that I missed the first race on the Sunday, um, even on Gold Cup Day, but I'll be I'll be trying my best to get there. And what you need the... to do, Rich, is the, yeah. the, new, the nightclub is reopening. It used to be known as Blinkers, and that was the place you found love. It was the place to go. So all you have to do is go to Blinkers, have a little sleep, and just come straight out of Blinkers. And you'll be there for the 12.40. Oh, perfect. 
if if Fish one of you, bar. if if Danny, you can if you can bring my outfit for the second day with you, <laughs> then just get changed. Perfect. I was gonna say, to be perfectly honest, if you're expecting me to be in blinkers with you, you got another thing coming. So yeah, you you go in there. <laughs> into the into the waiting room for a quick shower, and I'll be absolutely perfect. Go for it. <laughs> I'm glad it's you said shower. Bit. Oh yeah, I need. <laughs> I'll take. I have to take my toothbrush with me though. <laughs> okay, twelve forty. Irish Stallion Farms EBF Paddy Mullins Mares Handicap Hurdle, two miles two listed race. Uh, it's a bit of a case of who runs, who wins for a lot of these races. Um, yeah, it's probably the case for the whole card. We'll do our best uh, to pick out some that we think are going to head to Leopardstown Sunday. Uh, hopefully, we will get some winners as well. Um, and play up our winnings from Saturday because um, I want to be bathing in Euro notes when I get back on Sunday night you know, before I fly home. Monday. <laughs> okay, Dawn, do you know who runs? Do you know who wins? Uh, well, what I'm taking from this is, and I know that Willie will be very eager to win this because it's named after his dad, the great Paddy Mullins, who, you know, is associated with the great Dawn run, etc. So, uh yeah party central's won this before black tears has won this before we've seen what them ladies have gone on and done i don't need to wax lyrical about how important these mares races are they're so important and if you can't see how important they are then you're in the wrong game i digress firstly uh my five to follow again which is great there's another one coming out to play she could be anything i was lucky enough to meet one of her breeders fergal who had She Could Be Anything. He also bred Frontal Assault. And before she was being named, they said, well, what are we going to call her? And, and the other fella who's in partnership with him said, ah, she could be anything. And she really could. I mean, when she beat the Model Kingdom at the Punchestown Festival, I was really taken. You know, the Model Kingdom is one of my cliff horses. I will be cliffing her on Sunday, by the way. Um, and that day in that race, Day and Night was fifth in that race for the double greens. We've seen Day and Night has come back out and won on that very foggy one race day at Nace. Um, I really liked her when she beat Mighty Tom at Kilbegan. So she's able to take on the men as well and take them on easy. Uh, Jack will probably ride. She's Gordon. And also in here is Risk Bell. Now, I love Risk Bell because she's been third to Jazzy Matty in the Boodles. Um, she's been treated to Lossy Mouth's backside twice. What a lovely backside to have when she was fourth to her and fifth to her. She beat News Rhett in the Willow Warm at Fairy House this season. And she was third to Jatara uh, in the Mare's Hurdle. And you know what, how we feel about Jatara now. So out of the two of them, look, I think she could be anything as seven to one. There is prices and Risk Bell is three to one. Risk Bell looks the out and out winner here. She should be frank in the form with Lossy Mount, News Rhett, etc. But I do think she could be anything, will come very close to her because I had a lot of strong belief for me to put her up as my five to follow, you know, at the start of the year. So if it's not Risk Bell, let it be. She could be anything. And I still truly believe she could be anything. Okay, great. Danny? Yeah. I mean, I will just briefly touch on she could be anything. It was reported that she made a bit of a noise last time. Um, whether that's anything to take into consideration um, is obviously down to down to you. But, uh, yeah, they might look at that once the season's over, possibly, if, if there's still something there. But I will, um, I will, I will go with Broomfield Bijou um, at a bigger price. Beat well, sorry, didn't be finished in front of She Could Be Anything um, uh, last time in behind Hispanic Moon. She's got a lovely pedigree, been by that sire walk in the park. Um, I think there's there's a bit of Annabelle, Annabelle Fly in there as well in that pedigree. So she's she's improving. Um, whether she's quite capable of, of, of winning a race like this, I'm, I'm not sure. But I think at an each-way price, she's... Um, She's she's a nice bet, but I think Risk Bell is going to be uh, it's going to be tough to beat. I'll I'll stick with Dawn on that one. Um, if you want to play a shorter price, but yeah, Broomfield Bijou is uh, 
is around 14 to 1. So I'll have a nibble at that. Okay, great. The 110 is the Labrooks Novice Chase, grade one, two miles, five furlongs and a half. Um, and Gaelic Warrior, as we mentioned before, didn't get declared for the, the Arkle on the Saturday. So I think it looks likely now that he's um, going to go to this race. Um, and I think that makes sense in my mind. Um, but getting in Willie's mind is pretty impossible uh, with Willie Roulette. Yeah, he doesn't even know. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, down to evens now. So looking, yeah, more and more likely the horse is going to run in this. So probably great to see another horse I've not yet seen in the flesh. So looking forward to it. Uh, Dawn? Oh, he's hilarious. Just wait, just wait and wait until you see the lady who does them the whole way around. It's Gary. Gary, will you calm down, Gary? Gary, calm. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, Jesus, look, there's somebody on a, oh, Jesus, look over there. He's like, look at everywhere. He is just <laughs> class. And when he wins, not if he wins, the crowd will just be saying, we love you, Gary. And he knows that we love him. We he knows and he's just big and like I said out of that Ballymore last year the second horse and the third horse were possibly the best horses that came out of that still to see Champ Kylie but um, Corbett's Cross is entered in here but he's also got an entry for Ferry House on Wednesday I don't think he'd take Gary anyway Grange Clare West could be a threat in here I mean he was very good in the Nevilles and and Willie said he was very very surprised with how good he was that day at Nace when I seen him when he bet Corbett's on debut. Excellent. He's five to one. He's tasty at five to one. Fact to file is in here. Everybody just wants a piece of fact to file. Should he run? He's six to four. Poor old American Mikey as well. He um he came back at Navin and then Fahini kind of just blew up again. So but uh all I want is my pink and green and my Gary. Or garlic bread, as Patrick Mullins so lovely calls him. But he's he's a cool, cool guy you're in. Again, you're in for a treat. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Danny? I really do like Grange Clare West, obviously. Gary's going to be tough to beat, but Grange Clare West was so impressive last time. Like, so impressive. Paul had said um, after the race that that first fence, he just kind of jumped out his hands and he was struggling to settle and settle the horse after that. Um, but yeah, he was just tanking his way through the whole race. And you, you can't really do that for three mile and then expect to go on and do exactly what he did, which was just frightening. So there's no surprise to see if he does turn up here, drop back in trip. Um, I, I think he's, he's always had that potential in, in him. But um, yeah, fact files, I think, going to be the brown brown advisory horse. So exactly where where the send Grange Clare West will depend on on how well he. He settles here because, uh, yeah, a three mile at Cheltenham or more is, is going to be uh, is going to be tough if, if pulling your arms out the whole way around. So, no, I, I hope Grange Clare West will go here, and um, and obviously Gaelic Warrior. Does he does he run all three? Does he run Fact File as well? Who knows? It'd be it'd be quite something if if Willie did because they're uh, the three exciting horses to to all keep on side wherever they turn up at Cheltenham. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see which if ones they do, do go. Um, <laughs> yeah, in this. We'll move on to the next race, uh, which is the 140 Tattersalls Island 50th Derby Sound Novice Hurdle. Another of the eight grade ones um, over two miles. And I think we look like we might have found one here, Danny, if he runs. I, I wouldn't say necessarily we've found one. We've, we've had a little bit of a... Uh, an inside info from a from from a trader's desk, I suppose, is the best way to describe it. Um, on Gold Dancer, there's been some uh, some great reports come out that Gold Dancer's been been doing some nice work at home. So yeah, two hundred fifty thousand at the Arcana sales in May. Doctor Dino, uh, what what price is in this race? About thirty three to one. I think we took 33s. I think he's probably... Is he still there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't delved into the into the form too much, but I was I was more keen on the, getting the price before anything else because yeah. um, I wasn't sure how long long it would last. But, hey, yeah, what can, what's the worst that can happen at a price like that? You, you'll take a punt. 
and um, it's 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 not like Willie to to pull something out the bag in uh, in the DRF that no one's seen up to now. So yeah, we'll we'll have a go, see what happens, eh? Yeah, why not? See if we've got one to beat Ballyburn. Um, I'm actually looking forward to seeing Fair and Glory runners again um, as well because he would have won that race at Aintree had he not fallen. I think he was travelling well. Do you yeah. not think? Yeah, I, I, just Ballyburn. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just get certain things about certain horses. And yeah, impressive last time. Everyone's shouting from the rooftops, Ballyburn, Cheltenham. Mm. It's just certain things about certain horses I just can't understand. And whether it's because they're hype horses, and for me, I want to avoid hype horses as much as possible. Um, I, I just can't warn. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Ballyburn. Um... So I'll avoid it anyway. What do you think about this race? Oh, well, you'll, you might feel the burn of Ballyburn. Uh, should we go off him now? I don't think so, because Firefox, as we know, didn't run up. The Firefox and Croke Park both scoped bad after uh, the grade one at NACE, which was rescheduled. So... I haven't given up on Foxy for the Supremes. I still think he's fantastic. And I don't know why now, after one run, we're saying he's rubbish because he really isn't. It's kind of the John Bond factor again. And I think come March, a lot of people will be eating their words on Firefox, which leads me into Ballyburn because you've got that form there. I do really like the horse. I really, really do. Yes, he is very much a hype horse. Every second tweet you hear, Ballyburn, Ballyburn. Farron Glory... Five to two in here. He's a little bit spicy, guys. You're going to see that he is. It takes him a while to settle. You'll even see that around the parade ring, and that could be kind of to his detriment. It's going to be buzzy. It's going to be loud, and horses are going to feel that. So, you know, he, he, he might just be a little bit buzzy. He's Croke Park's half-brother, too. Uh, I know Will, if Will's watching, he's going to be dipping in again because it took him a month to get over that tumble and fall. Uh, <laughs> King of Kingsfield is in here. Does he run? We don't know. Uh, I adore King of Kingsfield. I don't think he'll come out and win again the weekend, though. K de Bourbon is in here at 33 to 1. And the last day, I was saying my Hail Marys and my Our Fathers. I know I put him up for the subs twice. I put him up for the subs at Turles. You know, he got home. He got the job done. I just don't think he's quite as good as some of these in here. And Slade Steel. I've been waxing lyrical about Slade Steel and Slade Steel's form has been franked left, right and centre. Rob Kerr, Rob Kerr. Yeah, and the Rob Core colours, Henry, Rachel. That horse got up that hill at Nace and I always say Nace is the place. Nace is the place. Then he came out at Navin and he won again. So, so easy. He's five to one here. If you don't want a bit of belly burn, if you don't want to be safe, have Slade Steel at five to one. I think he's the one to beat. Okay, excellent. Um, after that, we will move to the 210 Labrooks Dublin Chase, grade one, two mile one. It's time for El Fabiolo to strut his stuff um, and cement his place um, at the top of the market. I know he's probably shortened up after John Bomb the other day. Um, but yeah, again, a nice one to to see uh, in the flesh. Dawn? Oh yeah, look, we've been waiting for the double green giant, haven't we? And uh, we think about the what could have been had he gone to the Clarence House, but then we go the what could have been for John Bond had the Clarence House been at Ascot. And we can't think of that. Like any good racehorse, we move forwards. And the double green giant, how anybody wasn't impressed in the hilly way, or they call it now the Willy way because Willie always wins it, I don't know because he was just, yes, the last was not pretty, but he was still effective. And when you see him, his head is the size of my body. That's how big this horse is. That's why he's the double green giant. And he's such a cool, cool horse. And like what he did last year, he'll do the same this year at Cheltenham. There's no, no, I don't want to argue with anybody about that. He he wins this and he wins this easily. Gentleman to me is in here who won it last year. I know, Danny, you said you were waiting to see him because you thought he was more of a spring horse. He's a lovely, lovely horse. He's 11 to 2. So people obviously do like a bit of him. 
My darling Dino Blue is in here too. She's four to one at the moment. She is classy, such a classy girl. And uh, Captain Guinness as well is in here. Good old Cap. We're waiting for his whopping day to come. The real Captain Guinness didn't turn up the last day. Are we going to learn much here? We're not going to learn much apart from that the double green giant is absolutely mighty. And uh, Dino Blue will be second too. Yeah. Should think, he run? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. We don't we don't know. Uh, Gentleman to me, Captain Guinness, I think they'll run. If they do run, they'll run their races, but they probably both need better ground than it's going to be, um, which probably means that Danny will get an even bigger price for Captain Guinness for the champion chase, won't you, Danny? Yeah, um, well, I know Captain Guinness, obviously, there was a, there was a few issues um, last time. Um, so I, I couldn't really be couldn't really be backing him here. Um, I, th I think the founder is clinically abnormal, which is not great. Um, but obviously back here, so they must be happy enough with uh, with him now moving forward. So I think if if he puts his best foot forward, then he can he can show up well. Um, but like you say. If it was slightly better ground, I'd be all over gentleman to me as maybe a without the favourite bet because um, he, he downed obviously Blue Lord in, in this contest last year. So that this is what he's primed for. The DRF is 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 there for gentleman to me, but yeah, it's just going to be nice to see uh, El Fab in the flesh again after um, after winning at Cheltenham last year. So I'll be uh, I'm looking forward to see him again. Yeah, brilliant. Um, we'll be treated to another excellent performance in the race after, probably, in the 245 Chanel Farmer Irish Champion Hurdle, Grade 1 over two miles. And it looks like State Man will bully them all again. Um, it's interesting to see Bob Ollinger's in, entered here. Um, I th would have thought two miles would be a little bit on the sharp side for him, but uh, we'll see if he turns up. Um, Dawn, State Man, we've got, the, we've got the scarves that are in the right colour for this, so... Um, yeah. yeah, we'll be hopefully cheering him into the winner's enclosure. Ah, look, he's he's such a gentleman. Even Paul says he's so easy. He's just an easy, easy guy. I call him the ginger ninja because he just, I'd say they don't even hear him coming. And then he just slips by like Lossie last week when she just went, bye, same thing. Bye. And that's what he'll do. He'll say bye. Imperi Pass is coming up against them again. Look. Where do they go with Impy? What do they do? Will Impy be second to him? Who knows? You've good old Echoes and Rain in here too. She always shows up. She does her bit. Bob is in here. Now, I had an expert telling me earlier that they couldn't have State Man whatsoever because I like State Man. So they're going to go with Imperi Pass and Bob Ollinger instead. It's solely because when you're backing against horses because somebody likes them, I mean, you need to really question yourself. The horse does it and does it with ease and we talk about in another lifetime if there wasn't a con hill imagine that world it's like saying imagine a world without shrimp okay it's the same thing imagine a world without con hill then state man would we be giving him all the plaudits that he deserves yes he is fantastic he's brilliant he does it with ease the same lady who does gary does state man uh so you know these horses just perform for her too they love her and um He's just, again, as I keep saying, this weekend is where you get treats, so many treats, because at Cheltenham, you mightn't get as up close to them, but here you're going to. You're going to be able to smell them. You're going to be able to see them. You're going to be able to take in their personalities. And like I do every weekend or during the week when I'm lucky enough to go racing, I'm up and down the country, and I, 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 they do become like family. They really, really do. And State Man now, I know nearly three years. He was one of, when we got out of lockdown, he was one of the first I seen. So I think I have that emotional attachment too. So yeah, my ginger ninja, then the rest. Forget about the rest. I don't want to know about the rest. Mm -hmm. It's the ginger ninja, State Man. Brilliant. Danny? Yeah, State Man. He's um he's improving even more on on last year, you know like like Don touched on there you you can't help but feel sorry for him that he's he's coming to coming to his life bumping into the, the likes of Constitution Hill, um but he's he's a legend in his own right and 
that performance last time was frightening. You know, uh, he's he's achieved more there than than he's achieved up to now. And um, if he keeps improving, then who knows? He he could he could run uh, Constitution Hill much closer. I think maybe last year they were they were kind of knowing the fate heading into that race. Whereas this year they might be a bit more bullish and maybe ride them a little bit differently. Obviously, we're we're, we're talking about about Cheltenham further down the line now, but you know th- this this is going to be a formality for for State Man, um, and I and I think he can he can really put a marker down here and show people exactly how good he is and and, and improve again on that last performance where he beat Imperia Pass. Um, but yeah, I, I I do like him a lot. Okay, we now have two handicaps in a row. The first of which is the 320 O'Driscoll's Irish Whiskey Leopardstown Handicap Chase, grade three over two miles, five and a half furlongs. Um, I think I mentioned James de Burley on the last pod or maybe the one before that um, <laughs> when Meeting of the Waters got the win for you, Dawn. Um, was was he first reserve in that race? And you said if he gets in, he wins, wow. and he, he, he did. Um he meets that horse on fourteen pounds better terms this time, um, and I think the drop back in trip as well um, will suit James de Burley uh, over two and a half, two miles, five and a half furlongs. I think that's better than than the three miles before. Um, I really think there's one in him, and I'm hoping that this time is it. Otherwise, he's going to turn into my cliff horse. Um, <laughs> he's actually only thirteen to two in this, so you know they've, a lot of people are probably joining me in uh in that fact as well so hopefully i mean he got placed last time he still got fourth so hopefully he does goes a couple better um three better and gets a win for me um who have you got for us in this well i know meeting us at the water is back in here again and he's yeah. quite you know like 10 10 five to one so they didn't penalize him and he was to go to nace last week they didn't end up running him so i mean it's interesting that he's back in here again will he get another one i was so impressed the last day and i was so delighted as well because he was like a tasty six to one and to me that was a steal at that weight too and danny mullins is just you know he's he's riding to win all the time for you whether he doesn't think he's gonna win he'll still ride them to win um Adam is in here, my adamantly chosen. Now, he was one of my five to follow last year. Is he going to appreciate the heavy? They're saying it's heavy at the moment. Probably not. But what I will take into account was that he was second to the late great Mighty Potter here last year. And he was also second to Jerry Kalam. He was seventh in the Browns and I had really liked him in the Browns. But he's a lovely horse and he's 10 13. Uh, he was 10 to meet into the waters the other day. He always runs his races. I mean, at 16 to 1, I'd have each way play because, by God, what the way he ran behind Mighty Potter last year at Leopardstown, you know, he, 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 he always gives us all. Classic getaway is in here, whether he turns up and runs, I don't know. Facker Duderese is in here, another old favourite. Um, James de Burley, I think you and uh, Racing Lee Rich are probably pouring your money on here because the two yous talk about him more than your mothers, I think, at this stage, you know. <laughs> it's uh, <Yeah. laughs> Jimmy Jimmy de B, but he did run a great race the other day. Um, Good Time Johnny is in here too. Now, he was in this last year as well, and then he went on and he won a pre tomps He's got 9-12. He's 33 to 1. That's whopping. And he's back over hurdles again. You've seen he did try his hoof at, um, at jump, but now he's back over hurdles. Um, I know the way you're thinking. And Danny, I know the way you like him. So 10-9 here as well. He was a good third. Had the two boys been too naughty and took each other down, he would have been the winner at Limerick at Christmas. Um, I mentioned earlier for the Fortuna as well. Uh, tend to carry in this last year and has been third to Harvard boy. Now, Harvard boy, as we've seen, is a very, very good horse. So out of all of them, I mean, I, I, I've i talked about half the field here. I like Adam, Adam chosen at each way play. And um, meetings of the waters, I mean, five to one. And with that weight, should he run? He's decent. Should he not run? I go for Forte Fortuna. 10-12 on his back. You've got the Harvard guy. 
uh, and he's been tending this last year. So should meeting at the water come out of here, I go for Ford de Fontura and adamantly chosen each way play. Okay, Danny. Sean's mentioned it there. I know the way you're thinking. Um, I, I like this horse quite a bit. I think they've they've been riding riding him very tentatively, so to speak, not wanting to get too close to uh, to Gary. Not that he he would do, but obviously you don't want to uh, you don't want to ruin a handicap mark too early in the season, you know. So yeah, um, be interesting to see exactly what they what they do here. Um, I have had a little play for the uh, for the plate handicap chase at um, at Cheltenham. Obviously, we know JP McManus will be will be littered with runners in those handicaps, and and he could be one of the more fancied ones. Um, when it comes to Cheltenham, if that is the route that they go down, um, does have a, a brown advisory novice chase in case he blows out the water. So, yeah, um, I think the fact that they've they've pitched him in here up to now uh, tells you that they're, they're maybe expecting expecting something uh, a good performance possibly, but uh, classic getaway, a lot of weight to give away there. To be perfectly honest. I'll uh, I'll probably keep it simple if if I know you, I know the way you're thinking does run easy for me to say, and um and and back him because he's he's on a nice weight now that he's he's handicapping so he could prove tough to beat and even if he does go go and win this and goes up in the weights he'll um he could still go down the handicap route with Cheltenham you know. Okay, great. Off the field covered there, but. Uh... Yeah, it's not an easy race, is it? And we don't again. We don't even know if half of them are going to run. So, um, the three fifty is the timeless sash windows handicap hurdle listed race over two miles. Um, King of Kingsfield, Magical Zoe, Ontoba, Ontoba, Ontoba. Um, yeah, make up a pretty good field here if they all turn up. Um, I see Zenta as well sneaks back over hurdles after not really looking like she was ready for fences last time. Um, even though she was only two lengths behind Harmonia Maker, who won the other day for a lovely Irish expert. Um, and around 10 to 1 is probably not the worst price if, um, if declared tomorrow. So probably keeping my eye on her. Um, that's probably my tentative selection. Uh, but she probably would shorten up if she does get declared. So we shall see. Uh, but yeah, it's quite a nice little little handicap this I think and uh, like you said Dawn that you probably wouldn't have wanted King of Kingsfield for the other race um, anti-post is favourite for this one so what are you thinking here? I, I I really I adore King of Kingsfield you know that and, and even I seen uh, what was put up where he finally learned how to race but he was coming second and second and second and second. So, I mean, you can't say he finally learned how to race. He just finally got his head in front. And by God, he was impressive. And then the horse who was second to him went out and won then too. So he's a cool horse king. He really is. And he deserves to be favourite here. Um, my clipper, the model kingdom, is in here again. And I, I look, I can't forget when she was second in the Moscow Flyer two Impere past pain in my ass and I just I keep waiting and I keep waiting and I'm probably going to be broke by the time she <laughs> ends up winning but I just really feel like something something is really coming here on Tubber well on Tubber is he going to get his day I'll let Danny see what he thinks there and I will, before Christmas when it was my birthday I got a lovely sometimes I get really nice DMs and I got a DM about Bialstock now, Bialstock ran at Galway. I didn't think he ran up to his full potential. He was a very good winner to Punchestown Festival. And he doesn't have a lightweight on him, but he didn't go to Leopardstown at Christmas where he was supposed to win. I wonder, is this a late birthday present? So should it be a late birthday present, I'm going to have a little bit of each way play. Hopefully he does run. I'm going to have my sentimental cliff on the model kingdom, but I'm all over King of Kingsfield again. He's bloody good. And now that he's found his, his way to the front, I think he'll keep staying at the front. Okay. Danny? Yeah, uh, I will be keeping Antubber on side 
especially if uh, Farron Glory obviously runs well earlier on the card. You've got King of Kingsfield in that form as well. So, um, yeah, I, I think you can't give up on Antuba just yet. Obviously, he's been highly tried maybe at, um, at the grade one level. So, you know, it, it, that speaks volume in itself. And I haven't had a Rob Core horse up to now. So, if I get to Sunday and I haven't backed one, then I'll be, I'll be back in Antuba because I've, I've just got a lot of nice. But, yeah, if you look further down, you've actually got Gary Form in Brazil, the gelded, now gelded son of Galileo. So exciting to see Brazil back. Obviously beat Gary in the Boodles in um, in Cheltenham 2022. So exciting to see, um, exciting to see if Brazil does in fact run back over back over hurdles. A mark of mark of 140 there. So yeah, I'll. Uh, I'll stick with Antubber and stick with King of Kingsfield and hope Farron Glory can, can give that farm a little boost beforehand. Hey, okay, great. We finally made it to the final race <laughs> of the DRF and it is the 425 Coolmore National Hunt Sires, Hurricane Lane, Irish, EBF Mares, Irish National Hunt Flat Race. That is the longest name of a race ever. Grade two over two miles. And it's a Mayor's National Hunt Flat Race, um, which obviously is music to your ears, uh, Dawn. And we mentioned, you mentioned, um, I know you're very outspoken on the subject about the importance of Mayor's Races. So it's good to bookend the whole festival. We started with a Mayor's Race and we're going to finish with one. Um, and it's one that has the daughter of one of the Mayors of the Century in Quivega, um, going in here as, yeah, going in here as favourite. Um and probably is the one to beat, but who have you got for us? Go well, on. I mean, firstly, just again to touch on how important these mares' races are. Yeah, totally are. And you want to keep the dream alive. And this is about keeping the dream alive. And as I always say about DRF, you learn so much, you know so much going forward. This will tell you what you're going to to have to look forward to in Cheltenham. This is why it's our mini Cheltenham. And this is for the women. This is the mares. And uh that was a big mouthful, Rich, but it certainly wasn't a waste with the quality that is in here. So, yeah, you touched on you've got Aurora Vega. Now, Aurora Vega's little sis, if anybody is still over and fancies going to the sales next week, her little sis, Princess Vega, is going to Goffs next Wednesday. So somebody is going to get a very nice purchase of a Quivega baby. And as we've seen, we've alluded to before that... Uh, who does Willie have on the inside of his his very famous hat, which actually was his dad's? Uh, Quivega is on the inside. So, you know, we're getting Facile Vega, the son. We're getting Aurora Vega, the daughter, on Sunday. So she is fantastic. She's been three from three. Possibly people keep saying, oh, she was, she was more a summer horse, but she's going to show herself. Now, I'm delighted we're getting to see her. You're talking about famous mums. You've also got Augusta Kate's baby in here, Baby Kate. Now we've seen what Baby Kate did. I put my fist through the telly because I went, I my my head was turned and turned stupidly by sharp object. And Augusta Kate hacked up at seven to two in the bumper at Cheltenham. Very, very easily, very, very nicely. So in an ideal world, I'd like to see Aurora Vega and Baby Kate fighting it out at the end for the their famous mums and we've also got if you remember a couple of weeks ago when the El Fab video went out and they were asking who was the horse in front who was the horse in front and Danny Mullins and I believe a lot of what Danny says he said it was Femme Magnifique Femme Magnifique is Trey Magnifique she was bought at the sales uh, by Harold Kirk for 94,000 she won a couple of weeks back. She's gorgeous. She's in the same colours as High Class Hero. You know, I think an awful lot of High Class Hero too. Uh, uh, he's my Albert Bartlett winner, true and true. So Femme Magnifique in here as well. You're going to see some fantastic ladies. You're really going to see some fantastic ladies. But um, Aurora Vega will probably go off favourite. I'm going to forecast and I'm going to say... Aurora Vega, Baby Kate, reverse forecast, Baby Kate, Aurora Vega. It's going to be a great race. You want to try cast, put Femme Magnifique in there too. Okay. Try if they all fin- run. If they all if run, they yeah. All... Try cast to finish us off. That'll, that'll pay for dinner, won't it? 
<laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, Danny? Well, I, th- I think if uh, if some of the favourites have gone in, then Aurora, Aurora Vega will be will be odds on here, and the bookies will be will be running and and hiding and trying to not give anything away by by the last race. So it could well go off odds on. But um, was actually won by Fun 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 last year. Uh, the double greens have got Mongebello in here. Uh, a bit of only by night form. Obviously, only by night slightly disappointing when coming over the pond um, at Linfield the other week there, but. Yeah, I think uh, Mongebello's a, a nice horse in her own right. Um, justified favouritism last time in good style. Uh, useful horse, but it's going to be a one hell of a race because um, we've got some really nice mares in here. And and as uh, as as Dawn touched on there, we've we've got Baby Kate, who's who's going to be very nice, giving weight away. Is she going to be up for it? Maybe, maybe not. But I'll um I'll stick with Mongebello an each way play, possibly if if all of them get entered. Um, but yeah, there's you're going to learn a lot from this race. Um, and and don't discount any of the mares that do uh, that do end up turning up at um at Cheltenham because they, they get weight from from the boys and and they're certainly capable of uh, of putting it up to them. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a race. I mean. You might have a little, a little bet in it, but um, yeah, it's a race we're going to learn a lot from for the future, um, which is what those national hunt flat races are, are meant for. Um, so, yeah, exciting, exciting end. Um, we will move to our naps and next bests for the weekend. Um, we're not going to go totally muggy and all nap galloping de champs. Um, we've picked out a few different ones for you. For this, uh, my nap is at Musselburgh in the first race on Sunday in the Scottish Triumph Hurdle, and it is Liari, uh, the Paul Nichols horse. Um, looks um, well, it's unbeaten in two starts. Uh, looks uncomplicated, and I think it's going to take all the beating. Um, Nichols is in good form. He had a few winners today at Wincanton, and uh, Cobden is is on board, so he's going up up to Scotland for that. So fingers crossed, you can make it three for three. Um, my next best is a horse that we mentioned earlier, um, is St. Davy um, in that race at Sandown and on Saturday, 310. And I think he's back to 10 to one. So, I mean, that's ridiculous price each way. Um, I think the horse wins. So we'll see. Hopefully I get the, hopefully they all run because I seem to have that habit then I'm not even running. So, um, Liari might not be declared tomorrow we'll see um, but yeah something a bit different Dawn? Well like I'll just touch on last week luckily enough my two next bests came in and came in very very good and uh, stay away Faye wins the Browns we don't need to worry about that he was my nap but um, yeah the juicy juvenile on the Saturday my nap is Stormheart because he just, he has my heart. The 22 lender, you can't ignore. Cooligan stud, bred him. He is sweet as, and uh, yeah, I have a strong belief. I don't want to give you no value. I think he's still a bit of value in this juicy juve. And I think he is a threat to Sir Gino. And I was hoping we were going to have a, a, a threat and this is him. My next best is Risk Bell. Should she run? She's three to one uh, for JP, Willie Mullins. Mark will probably be up. And we know Mark is just riding out of his skin. Peachy, peachy, peachy at the moment. So, yeah, in the paddy, uh, Mullins mares. Should Risk Bell not be in the race? Uh, my next best, which you're probably getting a bonus here anyway, in the 5.35 tomorrow, Shamrock Glitter. He's... Lossy Mouth's uncle and uh, he's running at Maidan in the 535. He was an impressive second on debut in Dubai. So that's my next best. Uh, Risk Bell, Shamrock Glitter and my nap. I'm all heart for Stormheart. Okay, perfect. Danny? Finish us off. Uh, my nap is going to be at Newcastle in the last race. Crocodile Power for Seb Spencer. Um, he ran a very good race at Chelmsford two weeks ago 
and we were caught in quite a bit of traffic. There was lots of wind. Everything that could have gone wrong beforehand basically went wrong. Um, but, but we managed to get there, and he ran a very solid race. Um, he was beaten three quarters of the length, staying on through the line. Uh, may well reoppose Tillsworth only tar here um, on four pound better terms because he's been left alone from that slight drop in grade to not to 57 class. We think that the stiff nature of uh, of Newcastle will suit him a lot better. Um, the, we were maybe concerned to start with that he he wasn't quite putting it in, but I think he's proven everyone wrong that he's 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 definitely doing that. Um, I think maybe just dropping him back to sprinting trips has, has helped him massively. He's seen his races out really well. So, yeah, he'll come on again for, for that last run and, and he might well be an each way price in a competitive race because obviously it's very good prize money. Yeah, hopefully they've uh, the track's bedded in a little bit more. It's not so deep yeah, well, out there for that jumper's bumper. Um, I, I don't know if there's any jumper's bumpers planned, but yeah. It, Baffles me why they even do that, but we won't go down that route. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think all that leaves us is Dawn to sign us off. Um, we'll see you all Saturday, uh, hopefully. Um, definitely come and say hi if you if you see us in our DigiSip scarves. Um, might have some QR code cards, which will have some discount codes, etc. for signups, uh, potentially, so... They haven't turned up, unfortunately, but if they do, I'll get them to you. If not, we all like Guinness. If not, if not, if just, not Guinness. Like Guinness. Yeah. just Guinness. So, yeah. The QR code something. is at the bottom of the glass. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> love, luck, light, and laughter as always. And uh, Team Digi Tips will be at DRF to have an El Fabiolo time. Guinness on tap. The crack is mighty. And the horses are even better. This is our mini Cheltenham. Enjoy. Best of luck. Get in. Get stuck in, in the great words of the great King Willie Mullins and who we trust. Get stuck in.